Behavior Designer integrates directly with Playmaker and this video is going to give an overview on how to allow the two to talk to each other. This video is also based on the web page that describes Playmaker integration so I'm basically going to be following these steps and it will pretty or it should be the exact same steps. Alright, so let's get started. Now because Behavior Designer does not require Playmaker we have to place the Playmaker assets in a separate Unity package so that they don't get compiled. They were separated, or if they were not in their own Unity package, then every then you would get a compile error if you did not have Playmaker. So the first thing to do is to extract the Playmaker assets, and you can see that there are just three files, so let's go ahead and import those. And now, well, whenever it gets done compiling, you'll see this list update, and now here's a Playmaker FSM task. So for what we're, what we're going to end up doing is creating a sequence task and then two playmaker tasks. And one playmaker task will return success, one will return failure, and that way you'll be able to see them actually doing something. So to get things started, let's create a sequence task. Oh, actually I need to select my game object. We'll create that sequence task. And then let's create the two playmaker one tasks. And I'm just going to place the two playmakers as a child to the sequence task. So if you look in the inspector, you can see that there are a few different things that are required for the playmaker task. We need to know the playmaker game object, the FSM name, and the event name. I'll describe each of those as we get into things. Alright, so now let's open up playmaker and we will add a playmaker FSM to this component and we might as well add another one just because we're going to need to eventually anyway. So as you can see on the right hand side we have two FSMs and we're just going to operate on the first one to begin with. So our end goal is to get a group playmaker graph that looks like this right here. What it's going to basically do is we're, we have to set up this one state called a behavior tree listener and this state is where Behavior Designer is going to start running. The key part of this state is to create this event and Behavior Designer will call this event name whenever it wants to start running. Because of this it has to be global. So now that we've created the state, let's add that start FSM transition and we'll create one more state. Now to make it look like it's actually doing something we're going to add a wait state and we'll just have it wait a second or a little bit just so that you can see that it is actually working and I accidentally added two. So as soon as the wait state is done it is then going to go to this set bool state and the set bool state will do exactly what it says. It's going to set a bool value and that bool value will then be returned to behavior designer and that's where we're going to get our success or failure. So the last state that we need to have is a resume behavior tree state. These names don't matter. It's the main things that matter is this event name at the start and then at the end we need to have this resume behavior tree action. Alright, so we have the different states. Now let's start adding the transition. This one needs to go to the wait state. As soon as the wait state is done, it's going to go to the set bool state. As soon as the set bool state is done, it will then go to the resume behavior tree state. And just to clean up after ourselves, it will go back to the start state to kind of listen for more events. So let's organize it a little bit. And we see we have this error because we need to set a bool value. And let's create a new variable called my bool. And it's of type bool. So now let's go back to the state or the action and set my bool. And then when we return from the playmaker back to behavior designer, we want to indicate success based on that bool. So for this one, let's have the very first uh, FSM return success. So if the bool is true, 
then success is true here. So behavior designer will see success when it finish, finishes executing. So that's basically all it takes to set up. Again, the big thing is make sure you know you create a global event that is used by behavior designer to actually start things off. And then as soon as you want to resume the behavior tree, you have to add this resume behavior tree event. That's basically all it takes. So let me go ahead and create, go ahead and copy this. I'll go to FSM2 and, oops, and then I will, I will have trouble dragging stuff. All right, there we go. Now it looks a little bit better. We don't need that state. And for this one, I will return false. So FSM1 is going to return, return true. FSM2 is going to return false. Now what we have to do is, I think, yeah, we can close Playmaker. Now we're done with that. Remember, we had set up the two FSMs, and they are both on the same game object. So this Playmaker game object, will, we have to drag into the Playmaker game object field. The FSM name is FSM. We want this one to correspond to the very first FSM, and you can see that the name is right here. And the event name is the event that we created within Playmaker, that global event. So let's, and we had called that start FSM. So let's go ahead and call it that. Now for the second one, we basically have to do the same thing. Drag over the game object, name the event. And the one difference is that we want to reference the second behavior, or the second FSM, so we're going to call it FSM2. FSM2 returns false, FSM1 returns true. So this sequence node should progress onto the second node when we hit play. So let's go ahead and see what it does. It should also wait a little bit since we had that one timer within Playmaker. Hit play, it's starting, it waited a little bit, it ended, then it went on to the second one. Now just to kind of show that it is actually working, let me reverse the two. And now we should we do not expect to get to this FSM because this one has is going to return false and since it's a sequence node or a sequence task, it's not going to continue on. So I'm hoping I'm right and let's see what happens. So this one executes and it's done. So it worked correctly. And that's all it takes to get Playmaker integrated with Behavior Designer. It's actually pretty easy, and it's pretty cool how it works.